One of the worst things that I can think of that can happen to a new seahorse owner after they planned for months and done the research and bought a captive bred seahorse, provided them with a perfect tank and acclimated them properly to a quarantine tank is to watch the seahorse flip out and act like it's dying and not have any idea what to do. This actually happened to me recently when I bought two of the Erectus Redi hybrids. These seahorses are suffering from ammonia or nitrite poisoning. Some of the symptoms to look for so that you know what you're dealing with are bulging, scared eyes that don't follow you and seem like they don't see what's around them, redness around the eyes, and disorientation. They'll be gasping and breathing very heavily, and you'll notice that their gills and possibly stomach are lighter than the rest of them. They'll also leave their hitching posts to lay on the bottom too weak to get up. When people say that seahorses cannot handle ammonia or nitrite, they're not kidding. This is why it's so important to make sure that your tank is completely cycled before adding a seahorse or you could see these symptoms in your tank. However, if you just received the seahorses and they're in quarantine acting this way, it means something probably went wrong during shipping. If you have a local reliable breeder specializing in captive bred seahorses, it's always a better idea to pick them up in person. The reason is that even the best of breeders can have issues with shipping. One issue could be multiple stops at a wholesaler or another store before it actually reaches its destination. Another could be a careless driver who allows the box to be knocked around in a hole to get in the bag. The real issue that comes with shipping is when the bag is opened. This is because the pH of the water in the bag is lowered during shipping. It's actually a good thing because at a lower pH, all of the ammonia or waste that the seahorse produces is turned into ammonium, which is non-toxic and does not hurt the seahorse. Unfortunately, the moment that the bag is opened, the air hits the water, the pH rises, and all of that ammonium is instantly converted back into ammonia and burns the fish's gills. One thing that many good breeders do is to purge the seahorse before shipping. This means that they don't feed the seahorse for an amount of time before shipping, and that's just to help the seahorse so it doesn't provide as much waste in the bag. So getting a seahorse that looks a little thin is perfectly normal. Having the seahorse lay at the bottom of the tank and gasp is not normal. That means that something went wrong during shipping and the pH rose and they were exposed to ammonia and nitrite and are now dealing with the poisoning. Exposure to ammonia or nitrite changes the normal hemoglobin in the seahorse's bloodstream to a form, methemoglobin, which is unable to transport oxygen. So the seahorse is starved for oxygen, weak, and tired. What's absolutely awesome is that there's a product called methylene blue that can reverse the process and convert the methemoglobin in red blood cells back into normal hemoglobin so that they can breathe. Depending on the amount of exposure to ammonia or nitrite that you believe the seahorses went through, there are a couple of different ways to use methylene blue to help them. There's a quick dip and then a long-term bath. I first tried the bath for 30 minutes. Unfortunately, the seahorses were still breathing very rapidly and unable to right themselves for very long after the bath.
I decided to try the long-term bath, which is one teaspoon of the 2.303% methylene blue per 10 gallons of water, which makes a concentration of three ppm, and is to go for three to five days. You don't have to do a water change if you don't feed. However, in this case, these seahorses were starving. I rushed down to a store in Indianapolis that sold adult live brine shrimp and purchased a few portions. Brine shrimp is not actually that good for seahorses. It doesn't contain the things that seahorses need, and I need these seahorses to get better quickly. So I pulled out my Dan's Feed. I chose to use the Dan's Feed with probiotics, hoping that it will help them in many ways. As you can see by the directions, it calls for an eighth of a teaspoon of the Dan's Feed to be added to some RO or any kind of water and blended for two minutes. When I use the immune boosting formula, I try to be more precise in my measurements, but with the probiotic formula, I don't mind if there's a little extra. So I added the eighth of teaspoon to my little blender and blended for two minutes. The blending helps to make sure that there are no chunks that the artemia cannot eat. It turns into a pretty nasty looking green mess, but hey, it's gonna help the Artemia, which will help these seahorses. I love this little Hamilton Beach blender thing. I haven't lost much weight, but hey, my Artemia are getting very, very healthy. Anyhow, I'm gonna add the Dance Feed with probiotics to the Artemia with my airline providing them air and They'll eat it all and become even healthier to feed my babies. The Dan's Feed with Probiotics is probably my absolute favorite enrichment. That's because it actually puts good bacteria into the Artemia and then through the Artemia into the seahorses. When you're dealing with stressed or um, sick seahorses, Bacteria is a big threat. So having the good probiotic bacteria in the seahorse's stomach can only help outcompete and fight off any bad. I don't trust, well, I don't trust anybody, but I really don't trust some of the local fish stores. They've lied to me too often and I just don't trust. So I run most of my live foods and especially my Artemia, even those that I hatch, through the sieve that I bought from Seahorse Source. It's very cool. It's got the thin mesh sieve at the end. And basically, I just add the live foods in the middle. I can rinse them and then add them to a container of new water. And I have cleaner live foods, which I can then enrich. The reason that I chose to go to all this trouble to provide them with live Artemia, even though they are captive bred seahorses who are trained on mice, is because their muscles are weak because of the ammonia poisoning. So the Artemia are soft bodied and easier to eat when they're hurting and their throats hurt. These seahorses are really weak and I can't even tell you how excited I was when I saw the meat.
This is what I meant by disoriented and their eyes not following. This seahorse barely even looks at the food. This is the one that was doing the worst. I won't show you all of the video of this process because I would lose you for sure. <laughs> These seahorses are really weak and everything they're doing is very slow. When I say weak, what I mean is truly weak. When a seahorse doesn't eat for a period of time and they have stress and other problems going on, their muscles will literally start wasting away. Then when they do want to eat, it becomes harder. Their muscles don't work the way they, that they want them to. We talked earlier about using the artemia because it's soft bodied and easier for them to eat if their muscles are weak. I will take this opportunity also to mention that since I am feeding, I am doing 50 to 80% water changes every single day to make sure no ammonia gets in here because that would be just awful. And I add more of the methylene blue to cover the new water. The stronger of the two seahorses shown here is a perfect example of what I'm describing. He started trying to eat mysis on the second day, but just couldn't seem to do it. I would make sure that all uneaten food was removed within 10 to 20 minutes and then offer some of the enriched artemia. That also was removed if uneaten because having ammonia in, an, in a tank that I'm treating for ammonia poisoning would be just terrible. And products like Prime cannot be used because they counteract the methylene blue. After 24 hours in the methylene blue, I could tell a huge difference. While the smaller seahorse was still breathing very heavily and still had that disoriented, far out, in shock look, he was starting to at least look around. The bigger seahorse was breathing normally, eating at least live foods, and you can look at his eyes and see that he's back on this planet, so to speak. This guy I know is gonna be okay. After the full treatment of methylene blue, the little seahorse is still breathing heavily and having a hard time eating. I've noticed by the poop that she is eating something, but not as much as I'd like. The bigger seahorse is breathing completely normally and eating well, even frozen mysis. I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. I'm very lucky to have good friends who teach me and tell me how to do things and I only want to share this wisdom with you. Although both seahorses are still very thin, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of trouble fattening them up. They're becoming more active, and while the second seahorse still is not eating the mysis, I have a feeling that it won't be long. They don't even resemble the seahorses that I brought home, and I'm just so grateful for very, very wise friends and methylene blue. I'll provide links below for anyone who wants to learn any more about the products or processes discussed in this video. However, I do hope people keep this information in mind when acclimating seahorses. While my two seahorses were obviously exposed to ammonia and nitrate for a long period of time at some point in this process, it is true that any shipped seahorses will feel the ammonia the moment you open the bag. So. It's my opinion that you're much better off to just temp acclimate your seahorses in the bag because still closed and add them directly to the tank to avoid any possibility of ammonia poisoning.